Cain refused the sacrifice. Say I'm disappointed in your progress. I imagined you'd be here sooner. Tell me, did it trouble you to murder your brothers? Did it trouble you when you ordered me into the abyss? <laughs> Eternity is relentless, Raziel. When I first stole into this chamber centuries ago, I did not fathom the true power of knowledge. To know the future, Raziel. To see its paths and streams tracing out into the infinite. As a man, I could never contain such forbidden truths. But each of us is so much more than we once were. Do you not feel with all your soul how we have become like gods? As such, are we not indivisible? As long as a single one of us stands, we are legion. Our futures are predestined. Mobius foretold mine eons ago. We each play out the parts fate has written for us. Free will is an illusion. I found the tomb of Saravan Cain. How could you profane a priest by turning him into a vampire? How could I not? One must keep his friends close, Raziel. And his enemies even closer. Who better to serve me than those whose passion transcends all notions of good and evil? The Saravan was saviors, defending Nazgul from the corruption that we represent. My eyes are open, Cain. I find no nobility in the unlife you rudely forced on my unwilling corpse. You may have uncovered your past, but you know nothing of it. You think the Sarafan were noble, altruistic? <laughs> oh, don't be simple. Their agenda was the same as ours. is the usual question. In your case, when might be more apt? Very well, you old snake. If you'd prefer I use my bare hands. Well, this is completely unexpected. 
This orb disables our vampire enemies, leaving them helpless and incapacitated. Strangely, it seems to have the same effect on that peculiar weapon of yours. But you must believe me. I mean you no harm. You can drop the benevolent facade, Mobius. I know who and what you are. I should kill you where you stand. <laughs> Perhaps you should, my boy. But you don't. Are you so certain of that, Morbius? My role as Time Guardian affords me a certain level of omniscience, Raziel. No, you don't kill me. That honor belongs to your maker, Cain, some thirty years from now. Ah, you two are a pair. You're just as fatalistic as he is. Death comes for us all. Razier, <laughs> it's just a matter of time. How is it that you know my name? We have never met. On the contrary, Razier, I know you very well. And it grieves me to see how cruelly Cain has used you. I knew you when you were one of the Seraphan Brotherhood, Razier. We were even close. Oh, please. Fortunately, you need not love me now be my ally. Are we within the stronghold of the Seraphan priesthood? Yes, but the glorious days of the Seraphan have long since passed, I'm afraid. This is a more cynical and indecorous age. My mercenary army now inhabits this stronghold. We strive to honor the memory of the Seraphan with our own humble crusade. Is this the Vampire Vorador? Yes. The scourge of the circle. The most depraved and decadent example of his whole degenerate race. He slaughtered six of my fellow guardians as they cowered defenseless in this room. And you somehow survived this massacre? I and two others. The circle was devastated. Only we three were spared. How convenient. You'll forgive me if I don't naively devour every scrap of information you toss me. You have a reputation for deceit. And who has slandered me, sir? Your malefactor, Cain? The one who betrayed and destroyed you? Our common enemy? Consider the source before you judge me too harshly. We'll forget about rekindling our old friendship, then. But consider an alliance, based on our common ground. We both want Cain dead. I can help you do it. You don't want to meddle in this, old man. I know all about your sordid little schemes. But you're simply out of your depth on this one. You underestimate me, Raziel. Let me show you. Even now. Cain is lying in wait for you, unaware that I've snatched you out of the time stream and brought you here to me. See how he lingers at the very pillars he is destined to destroy, foolishly confident that he has eluded your grasp. The pillars are still standing in this time. Yes, Raziel. They are the embodiment of the divine force which preserves the life of our world. We who serve the pillars maintain their delicate balance, and Cain is destined to be the fulcrum upon which that balance turns. I believe you have already endured the wasteland wrought by his terrible, selfish decision. Cain's very existence is a cancer upon this world. As long as he lives, all of Nosgoth is in peril. You may never again be human, Raziel. But you can re-embrace the essence of your humanity and the nobility of your Seraphim heritage. Go to him, Raziel, and end this. But first, you will need to find your way out of the stronghold, and in this, I'm afraid I cannot help you. My soldiers will not understand your appearance here. They will try to kill you. You needn't fear them, of course. They're no match for you. Try to keep the casualties to a minimum. But do what you have to do. All great movements 
require a few martyrs. Alone now, I surveyed my surroundings and noticed a second time streaming chamber, its entrance identical to the first, but with one distinction. That crystal was significant, but how, I had not yet discovered.
Throughout the stronghold, I discovered evidence of my former nobility and my life as a Saraphan priest. This was the heritage so foully stolen from me when Cain raided my sacred crypt and defiled me. of Mobius's cursed staff, I could feel the strength of the Soul Reaver slowly returning. If that orb was as debilitating to vampires as it was to the blade, it gave Mobius a powerful advantage over his enemies. 
I finally understood how Mobius' crusade could decimate the vampires so successfully. If he could immobilize his enemies, they were at his mercy. But why, I wondered, would the staff have any effect on the Reaver? As I neared the stronghold's inner sanctum, a strange sensation crept over me. An indescribable feeling of displacement, a sense of vertigo, as reality itself appeared to warp and bend around me. The disturbance seemed to emanate from the sanctuary's furthest chapel. As I cautiously approached, the sense of dislocation intensified with each step. So this was the tomb of the beloved King William the Just, beatified here as the martyr and catalyst of Mobius' crusade. I was reminded of Cain's journey as a fledgling vampire, how Mobius coerced him to travel back in history and assassinate William, 
thus igniting a genocidal hatred of vampires among the citizens of Nosgoth. And here I discovered the source of the displacement, the Soul Reaver itself, laid out like a holy relic, and broken, apparently in the battle between William and Cain. I had not thought such a thing was possible, until, of course, Cain shattered the blade against me when he tried to strike me down. Thus, the captive spirit inhabiting the Reaver was released, and binding itself to me, became my symbiotic weapon. And so the Reaver met its former self, still imprisoned in this corporeal shell. I watched, mesmerized, as the Wraith Blade uncoiled itself and snaked down the length of the physical blade. Embracing its twin, its mirror self, the Reaver's long dormant spirit was now fully aroused. And for the first time, I felt the true presence of this other entity, willful, ravenous, and deranged from thousands of years of imprisonment. The Reaver was now in command, and I, now merely its helpless host, felt my soul being leeched to restore the blade. But the Reaver knew better than to destroy its host, and just as I neared the brink of oblivion, the blade released its hold on me. As I recovered, I realized we were now bound together in a fragile alliance. The Reaver no longer merely my symbiotic weapon, but a sentient parasite competing for control. What have you done to me, Mobius? Is this your trap? How mine? Don't forget it was Cain who led you here, not I. While you curse me, the only soul in Nosgoth ready to guide and assist you, Cain laughs at our folly and revels in your dismay. These blades, now coiled in sinister embrace, have inspired terror in the hearts of creatures far more durable than you, old man. Bound together as they are, I can only imagine what they could do to your soul's fragile shell. Raziel, I beg you to stay your hand. This was none of my doing. I have sought only to aid you in your righteous quest. Why, you're trembling, Mobius. Has your confidence abandoned you? You seem to have made a fatal error by leaving your precious staff behind. Is that where all your courage comes from? Listen to me, Raziel. You don't know what you're doing. I have taken an enormous risk by appearing here before you, so defenseless, yet eager to prove my good intentions. If there's anything left of the Seraphim in you, you won't do this. While you threaten me, your true enemy eludes you. Don't concern yourself with Cain, old man. He'll join you in hell soon enough. As you said, death comes for us all. Yes. The wheel of fate demands it. What did you say? The wheel of fate. The inexorable cycle of death and rebirth to which all men are compelled. We serve the same God, Raziel. To strike me down would be striking God's own attendant. And I don't believe even you would take that risk. I tire of your games, Mobius. Now that I know you fear me, I needn't concern myself with you. Cain is waiting for me. Go then, Raziel. Seek Cain out and destroy him in the name of the one god we both serve. You, who were once a seraphim priest, murdered, profaned, destroyed, and reborn again from his mercy. You are now most powerfully equipped to be his agent, his instrument of restoration and retribution. My own vengeance is motivation enough. By my soul, you almost had me, my little blue assassin. But that'll be the one and only chance you get. I assure you of that. 
I could now summon the blade at will, regardless of my strength. But once summoned, the blade's ravenous appetite could not be contained. It devoured the souls of its victims, and if I allowed it to become over-aroused, the Reaver would now turn its hunger on me. So this was the legendary Janos Ordrin, reputed to have been the most ancient and diabolical vampire to have ever existed. According to folklore, he lived high in the cliffs of Nosgoth's northern mountains and preyed mercilessly on the defenseless villages below. His reign of terror ended when the Saraphan finally hunted him down and tore his throbbing heart from his still living body. This relic came to be known as the Heart of Darkness and was supposedly imbued with the power to restore vampiric unlife. The Saraphan therefore guarded it carefully lest the heart fall into the hands of their enemies. But I wondered, could Janos Ordren truly have been as monstrous as depicted here? Or was this merely artistic license by the Saraphan, who sought to lionize themselves by demonizing their darkest enemy? Strange how my history came full circle. This chapel, I realized, was a memorial to my former Saraphan brethren and myself. All of us martyred here, and then so cruelly profaned by Cain when he imposed his gift on our noble corpses. For the first time, I beheld the image of my Saraphan self memorialized here among my fallen comrades. It tortured me to see how noble and pure I had been, and what a vile phantasm I had become, and a profound sense of injury, of loss and betrayal welled up in me, so overwhelming I could barely contain it. All I wanted at this moment was to find Cain and destroy him.
I emerged, and for the first time beheld Nosgoth in its former glory. The land overflowed with abundant life and vitality, and I knew with certainty then that the world I had left behind was nothing more than the corpse of Nosgoth, a lifeless husk bled dry by the corruption of Cain's parasitic empire. This was the fragile world Cain sacrificed to preserve his own petty life and ambition, heedless of the profound cost. The sight only deepened my resolve. I sensed that the pillars lay to the northwest, and if Cain truly waited to confront me there, I would not disappoint him. As I passed this arcane landmark, a wisp of the Reaver's energy was drawn to the ring, illuminating it. This created a beacon of sorts in the spirit world. If ever I found myself depleted in the spectral realm, and my soul tossed on the ethereal winds, these beacons would draw me back to safety and restore me. I did not yet possess the means to unlock this barrier, but this enigmatic symbol was clearly the key. Ancient obelisks were mysteriously attuned to my spiritual essence. By simply touching the symbol, I could safely preserve an imprint of my soul, and thus create a milestone to which I could return when weary, 
and from which I could resume my journey. While I had only just escaped the stronghold, I sensed that in time my journey would return me full circle to this place. Infiltrating the fortress, however, would be no small feat. The balcony that had provided my escape was now well beyond my reach, leaving this massive gateway as the only means of entry. The gates were sealed, but like the time-streaming chamber I had seen earlier, their operation was undoubtedly linked to that odd crystal mounted above the entrance.
These vampires had nothing in common with the deranged jackals I left behind in Cain's derelict empire. They seem to retain much of their former humanity. In this era, vampires were clearly not the uncontested predators we had been. These creatures were hunted mercilessly and oppressed. And while I still believed that vampirism was a plague and had to be wiped out, there was nothing noble or righteous in this crusade. This was simply ruthless persecution. of Nosgoth, pristine, whole, and uncorrupted. I had never beheld them in this undefiled state, yet something profound and indelible resonated within me at the sight. And there, waiting at the very heart of the pillars, was the canker that was destined to destroy them. I know you're there, Raziel. Mobius led me to you, Cain. Though I might have guessed you'd meet me here. <laughs> and if Mobius told you I was hidden on the underside of Hell, would you throw yourself into oblivion to pursue me? Mobius trawls for the ignorant and unwary, hauling his gasping prey from the streams of their destinies. Stay out of his net, Raziel. Spare me your elaborate metaphors, Cain. I have pursued you here for one purpose. You will pay for your betrayal, and balance will thus be restored to Nosgoth. And whose will is satisfied then? The will of Raziel or Mobius? Would I be better manipulated by you, Cain? Now, turn and face me. The chase is over. This isn't a chase, Raziel. We are merely passengers on the wheel of destiny, describing a perfect circle to this point. We've been brought here for a reason. I've seen the beginning and the end of our story, however, and the tale is crude and ill-conceived. We must rewrite the ending of it. You and I. Face me, Cain. Even you shouldn't die a coward's death. Isn't it customary to grant the condemned a final request? I recall no such courtesy from you. Indulge me, Raziel. All I ask is that you listen. This is the sublime moment of our undoing, Raziel. The ineffable fulcrum upon which swings the entirety of our history. This is where all of Nosgoth is betrayed. In this instant, Ariel... The Balance Guardian is murdered by dark forces bent on overthrowing the Pillars. Her spirit is just now tearing free, lost in the ether, trying to find its way here. You have already seen how she comes to haunt these Pillars. 
Bound here by your refusal to die, you are the reason this land becomes diseased. As long as you remain alive, you condemn Nosgoth to an eternity of decay. Be still, Raziel. See this. As Ariel dies, I am being born to take her place as Balance Guardian. Such is my destiny. At the moment of my first cry, Ariel's beloved, the Guardian Nupraptor, finds her corpse. Racked with grief and tormented by suspicions of treachery, Nupraptor plunges into a madness which overflows and infects all of the Guardians who are symbiotically bound, including me. The repercussions of Ariel's assassination were expertly calculated. The entire circle descends into madness, and I am tainted at the moment of my birth, instantly rendered incapable of fulfilling the role destiny has prepared for me. Shall I show you the same mercy you showed the rest of the circle, then? You blithely murdered them to restore their pillars, yet your hand faltered when it came to the final sacrifice. What makes you exempt, Cain? You're merely the last man standing. Why condemn me for simply carrying out what you hadn't the courage to do yourself? Let's drop the moral posturing, shall we? We both know there's no altruism in this pursuit. Your reckless indignation led you here. I counted on it. There's no shame in it, Raziel. Revenge is motivation enough. At least it's honest. Hate me, but do it honestly. Thirty years hence, I am presented with a dilemma. Let's call it a two-sided coin. If the coin falls one way, I sacrifice myself and thus restore the pillars. But as the last surviving vampire in Nosgoth, this would mean the annihilation of our species. Mobius made sure of that. If the coin lands on the reverse, I refuse the sacrifice and thus doom the pillars to an eternity of collapse. Either way, the game is rigged. We agree, then, that the pillars are crucial and must be restored. Yes, Raziel. And that's why we've come full circle to this place. So after all this, you make my case for me. To end this stalemate, you must die so that new guardians can be born. The pillars don't belong to them, Raziel. They belong to us. Your arrogance is Boundless, Cain. <laughs> There's a third option. A monumental secret hidden in your very presence here. But it's a secret you have to discover for yourself. Unearth your destiny, Raziel. It's all laid out for you here. You said it yourself, Cain. There are only two sides to your coin. Apparently so. But suppose you throw a coin enough times. Suppose one day, it lands on its edge. <laughs> <laughs>